Hello and welcome to Revista and Sixto Escobar. The segments you're about to see are an example of the programming that Revista presented this past year to the Hispanic viewers in all of New England. We selected those segments in English for your own benefit since we understand that most of you don't understand the language. But we wanted to bring you an example of our programming. As you know, by now, Revista is a Hispanic or bilingual magazine, the only one in New England, which allows to bring a fast-paced, moving, animated program to the Hispanic viewer, which we hope they enjoy. And now, I'll leave you with Revista. Culture and culture have existed as a part of the North American continent for centuries and as an integral part of the U.S. Armed Forces history for more than 200 years. Hispanic Americans were alongside their fellow Americans in the horrors of the trenches of World War I, on the battlefields of Europe and in the Pacific in World War II, in the frozen wasteland of Korea in the 1950s, in the steaming jungles of Vietnam in the 1960s and 70s. Together they all fought for the stars and stripes. Most were volunteers. As we entered the 1980s, we paused to recognize and celebrate our Hispanic heritage. All told, 38 Hispanic Americans have been awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for valor above and beyond the call of duty. We have researched and produced the following, one of a two-part series denoting the above mention. Brigadier General William Harris, now retired, became commander of the U.S. 65th Infantry Regiment in 1949. The commander, then a Fulbright colonel, felt the Pentagon brass was relegating him to obscurity. Harris felt that taking command of a regiment composed of Puerto Rican Americans was a step down in his military career but the general soon discovered his assignment became a step up. In my book, the lead paragraph says, this is a story of pride and prejudice. And by prejudice, I refer to the feeling of the officers and the, the brass even of the Pentagon, who had a feeling that the Puerto Rican wouldn't make a good combat soldier. At least I know my contemporaries felt that way. And in all honesty, I must admit that at the time I had the same feeling. As far as the pride of the part of the statement is concerned, I think it's the people of Puerto Rico are very proud of their heritage. They are descendants of the Barincan Indians and they're proud of their heritage. On top of that, the soldiers in the 65th Infantry are very proud of the regiment. They're proud of the history of that regiment. And so there's a, what you call a double dose of pride as far as the soldiers in the 65th Infantry are concerned. And so I said, this is a story of pride and prejudice. I think the reason why the Puerto Rican soldier was not given the same recognition of other troops in the United States Army during the Korean War was probably due to the fact that the editors of many of the papers in the United States didn't feel it was of sufficient reader interest to uh, publish it. The Puerto Rican papers, every paper, every day carried an article about the 65th in combat. As a matter of fact, most of the articles are always on the front page. So there was plenty of coverage. I think it's a question of selection by the editors. To answer the question of uh, and rationalize the feeling in the Pentagon that the Puerto Rican was a rum and Coca-Cola soldier, and then within a year later, they send the 65th Infantry to Korea in combat, I don't know that the Pentagon, the personnel in the Pentagon, the brass, really ever changed their mind. I think that came later. I think it came after the Viecas maneuvers in which uh, the 65th did very well. And then I think the Pentagon people began to change their opinion at that time. And certainly after we had been in combat for a couple of months, there wasn't any question in my mind that it was pretty well known in the military circles at any rate that the 65th Infantry was a fighting outfit. In the late 1960s, the Vietnam conflict erupted, and again, Hispanics made up a relatively high percentage of the participants. New Mexico, for example, whose Hispanic population comprised 27% of the state's population, supplied 69% of the draftees, 
and accounts for 44% of his combat's death. Although the Spanish surname population of California in 1970 was 10.7% of the total population, 20% of the California servicemen in Vietnam had Spanish surname, as did 22% of the California casualties. A total of approximately 52,000 Puerto Ricans participated in the Vietnam War. Of this total, more than 1,000 were killed and many more were wounded in action. The Vietnam War also produced 12 Hispanics Medal of Honor recipients. Among these, Private First Class Carlos J. Lozada of Caguas, Puerto Rico, and Master Sergeant Roy P. Benavides, who was condecorated 12 years after his heroic deed. For Commander Everett Alvarez, Jr., the Vietnam War meant being the first American POW in North Vietnam, where he remained for 3,103 days, making him a POW longer than all but one man in American history. We have taken a glimpse look at Hispanics in defense of America through their participation in U.S. wars. But how about the Hispanic men and women who have made a career of defending the Stars and Stripes? <laughs>